Good morning, everyone, and welcome again to Morning Worship and Prayer. We're excited to go through this last part of our mission statement today as we talk about going to every nation. Now, for now, let's prepare our hearts as we worship God together.
Lord, may your grace rest on every family and every individual listening today. Thank you, God, for going ahead of us, opening our hearts to you, drawing us near to you, and speaking to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning again. And our topic now is about going to every nation. You've probably noticed that in the past weeks, we've gone through our Every Nation mission statement. And we know that the latter part of that is about establishing churches, and campus ministries in every nation. That talks about world missions. That talks about us going to the ends of the earth. That talks about us going to every people group that is still yet to experience or to receive or to understand the gospel. And we are committed to be able to do that. Now, the beautiful thing though is this. That we're called every nation, right? We're called every nation churches all over the world. I mean, here in the Philippines, we're called Victory. Uh, and, you know, and several other churches, Every Nation Churches here in the Philippines, but all around the world, that name Every Nation Churches actually represents the vision or the mission that God has called us to go to every nation. Right now, we're at around 523 churches in 82 nations across the world with around 114 active church plants. That tells us that even until today, we're still very intent and intentional in being able to bring the gospel, plant churches, and campus ministries in every nation. Now, I'd like to read from Acts chapter 13. That's what we're going to talk about today. In the early church, especially in the church at Antioch, the way that God used the church in Antioch to be able to send missionaries to every nation. If you remember the Apostle Paul, that was the church, that was his sending church. That was the church from which he was sent. And uh, not just him, of course, Barnabas was with him. And we're going to talk about Paul's first missionary journey. Let me begin reading from Acts 13 in verse 2. It says there, While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there, they sailed to Cyprus. This is the beginning of the story. I would encourage you to read those two chapters, Acts 13 to 14, because it concludes, it tells the story of Paul's first missionary journey. In fact, he went, about in, he, he went to several places. He went to Cyprus, specifically in Salamis, and the, throughout the whole island as far as Paphos. He went to Pamphylia, <clears throat> specifically in Perga. He went to Pisidia, specifically in Antioch and Iconium. And then finally, he went to Lyconia, specifically to Lystra and to Derby. And after that, those two chapters would describe how he went from one city, one town to the next. And afterwards, he retraced his steps all the way from Derby back to Lystra, to Iconium, to Antioch, to Perga, to Paphos, to Salamis, and then sailed back from Cyprus, going back to Jerusalem. He was able to make that round. It was one missionary journey. Imagine that today. I mean, as we believe God for a work in every nation, for churches to be planted in every nation, as, as a church, you know, as a whole movement of churches, we are institutionally, you know, we have institutional efforts or initiatives like the 114 church plants. But then you're probably thinking, how do I participate? I mean, I, I go to work every day. I go to school every day. Or I prepare the baon for my kids every day. That's what I do on a daily basis. How can I get involved in the nations? How can I somewhat participate still? The good news though is that yes, all of us, all of us can participate in the work in the nations. So in fact, what, that's what we're going to talk about now. How you can practically participate, especially if you're not called to necessarily go to the nations, how can you participate as a regular Christian believer, you know, who's part of a local church, who's trying to live his or her life for God, and yet you can still be directly involved in missions. Let's go back to that passage. In verse 2, it says there, While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. This is a moment in the context of prayer, fasting, and worship, the Lord spoke 
to the church, to the leaders of the church. In fact, uh, both Barnabas and Saul were part of the leaders in the church. Now, you're probably wondering who is Saul. Well, he's the same guy, Paul. This was his name, Saul. But on this first mission, missionary journey, he transitioned to being named Paul or Paulos because that was his Roman name. And it was easier for them to be able to move around the Roman world with that name. So here was the Apostle Paul being set apart with Barnabas to the work to which God has called them. It came in a moment of prayer. Have you begun praying for the nations? That might be a good place to start. Have you begun praying for the nations? I remember, uh, you know, growing up in Victory, um, in those early years, they, were, they kept challenging us, right, to, you know, to be able to get a Bible and a passport. And uh, in those early years, we began praying for the nations. They told us, go ahead and pray for a nation. Uh, or a nation every day, or at least once a week. Pray for a nation weekly. Pick one particular nation. I began to pray for India in those days. And then eventually they invited us in, you know, um, I was still a student, a college student. Then they invited us to be part of a national youth missions conference. So we attended there. We were in many ways energized to believe God, uh, for, for, uh, to be involved in the work in the nations. And such that they even had breakout trainings after that. And I went to a training on being able to reach Hindus because I began to pray for India already. And then in the process, in the process, um, we were challenged to begin to give towards the nations. We were challenged to begin to give towards the nations and in a sense provision the missionaries who were about to go to the nations. Which brings us to the next part of the passage in verse 3. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So the leaders of the Antioch church laid their hands on Barnabas and Saul and then sent them off. The idea of sending off is, of course, the, the way we send off people now is that we pray for them as we send them to the nations. But the idea of sending off also means provisioning for them. You know, what they would need for the journey. How long will it take? How many months would it be? And so in a sense, the church in partnership with Barnabas and Saul, you know, help them with the provisions so that they could, you know, travel around the different islands and, and areas, you know, and, and areas that are nearby for, for them to be sent, in a sense, to the Gentiles. And so the church sent them off, but in sending them, they gave to Barnabas and Saul. I remember one of the initial challenges that was given to us. I was still, uh, again, a student at that time. I had a baon of like uh, around 50 pesos, I think. 50 pesos every week. That was it. That was, that was what I had. So I learned to tithe coming out of that, 5 pesos. And then for several months, there was a team that was going to Russia. And for several months, I, and I began to save up. So like after like two months, I was able to save up a little over 30 pesos. So this was circa 1994. I mean, 30 pesos is not much, but to me, uh, as a student, having 10 pesos as my allowance every day, that wasn't really much. But then, and then I found a missionary, who, a part of the team, who was going to Russia, and I gave that, that initial handful of just bills, I don't know, not coins, okay? just a little over 30 pesos, gave it, gave it to her. You know, I, and I, I saw her face. I mean, she, she knew that it was very little, but she saw the heart that was coming from a student who didn't really have much, but wanted to somewhat participate in missions. In those early years, I learned to give to the nations, however little I had at the time. The passage continues in verse 4. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. Now, I love the part that in the end, it is the Holy Spirit who sent Barnabas and Saul. It was the Holy Spirit who, made, who spoke to them in a time of prayer, fasting, and worship about setting apart Barnabas and Saul for the work to which God has called them, specifically missions. It was the Holy Spirit who, you know, it was the Holy Spirit who, of course, provided for the church so that they could send Barnabas and Saul. And in the end, we understand it was the Holy Spirit who gave them direction in terms of exactly where to go. So they went. It says that they went down to Seleucia and from there they sailed to Cyprus. Did you notice the progression in terms of the involvement of the local church in relation to missions to every nation? They prayed, they gave, and they went. To us today, we call it pray, give, go. That's your participation in missions, in world missions. We pray, we give, and eventually I pray that you'll be able to go. 
Now, because they kept challenging, challenging us to go. Uh, I think it was 1997 that I initially went. I didn't go to the nations yet. I went to a church plant in the province in Santiago, Isabela. After that, the following year, I went through our, um, our leadership institute, went through pastoral training. And the year after that, 1999, they challenged us to go and be part of a shorter missions in another nation. We call that now 10 days missions. So our initial place to go to was Yangon in Myanmar. Uh, I'm a, I, was, I, I have a medical background. We, we formed a, a medical team to be able to do medical missions in that place. That was our entry point. And we began to minister for around two weeks to the people, to the Burmese people. And uh, we had an opportunity to be able to share the gospel to them through translators as we serve them medically. That was so life-changing to actually be able to go to a nation and see how starved they are in terms of who Christ is. There is no mention of Jesus Christ in that city and in that nation. You know, it's, uh, and, and being able to reach them uh, took a lot of money, effort, and just prayer and, you know, boldness to be able to minister to them. But those two weeks were life-changing for me. The Lord opened up an opportunity for me to go. In fact, the following year, I went again. <laughs> Same thing, medical missions, and then we even need, did a sort of a worship concert there, still in Yangon, Myanmar. A few years later, I led a team as we went to Thailand. Then the following year, I led a team as we went to Guangzhou and China, and so on and so forth. And in the past years, I'm just going to the nations, believing God for a harvest as we continue to send our 10 days teams. That's low, uh, these are short-term missioners. And then we also have long-term missionaries that we get to send. I think uh, presently we have um, over 190 in 42 nations around the world. And it's amazing. Uh, it's amazing how God continues to use each of these long-term missionaries to open doors into the cities, into these nations, however difficult or dangerous it might be. What is your participation? We pray, we give, and eventually, this is my prayer and my hope for you, that you also will go. Pray, give, and go. What did they do as they went? That's a good question. If you read the rest of Acts 13 to 14, what did Barnabas and Saul do as they actually went? And this is exactly the same pattern that we do until today. Every time we send mission teams, every time we send uh, long-term missionaries, this is also the same thing that they do. Acts 13 in verse 5, when they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had John to assist them. The first thing they did was to proclaim the word. And that's what we do. Every time we go to a nation, we proclaim the word. The next thing they did was they performed miracles. And you see the sto uh, several stories like Elimas the sorcerer in Paphos. You know, uh, Paul prayed, God blinded Elimas. He began to grope around and the Lord turned the heart of the governor around and that whole island believed in God. And then there were many people in Iconium to, to whom Paul and Barnabas ministered to that they received their miracles. There was a crippled man in Lystra. And finally, Paul himself was healed from the stoning of the Jews in Lystra. He was almost left for dead. But then the disciples prayed for him and then he, he, he basically came back, <laughs> came back and he was healthy again. And it's amazing, all of these miracles. So they proclaimed the word of God and with that, the Holy Spirit demonstrated his miracles as the word of God was proclaimed. And in the end, they made disciples and raised leaders. Acts 14, 21, when they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They made many disciples. And finally, toward the end of Paul's first missionary trip, in verse 23 of Acts 14, and when they had appointed elders for them in every church, with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. What did they do when they went to the nations? They, perf they, they proclaimed the word, performed miracles, made disciples, and then raised leaders. A quick example. I have a brother who's also a pastor. His name's Gilbert. He's my kuya Gilbert Naron. And uh, he was sent to Timor-Leste with his family and five kids around 2013 to Timor-Leste. And in the course of around eight years, this is exactly what they did. Proclaim the word. <laughs> You know, prayed for many people to be able to receive their miracle. Made many disciples and raised leaders such that at the end of those eight years of ministry, when they, it was time for them to come back to the Philippines, their whole family, they literally had more than 10 full-time Timorese, local Timorese leaders in the church who were already serving. It was handed off to a, uh, to a 
local Timorese uh, guy who's now leading the church. It's amazing. This same pattern getting repeated in the many nations that we are ministering in. What would be our part in it? We pray, we give, we go. I'd like to ask you to prayerfully consider how you could continue to get involved, how you can get in, begin to get involved in missions, or how you could continue to get involved in missions right in your place, right in the middle uh, you know, of how we live our normal lives. Begin praying for a nation, maybe at least weekly. Begin giving toward missions. Uh, I've had a chance to be, to be giving toward missions for, more than thir- for around 30 years now, just regularly giving to missions, even as I started as a student. And then eventually pray that the Lord would open doors of opportunity for you to be able to go. Let's go to the nations. Pray, give, and go. Let's pray. Lord, enable us now to be able to understand how our place, Lord, in being able to reach the rest of the nations of the world. Lord, thank you for the way that you would open doors for us to be able to pray regularly for the nations, to be able to give regularly to missions. And Lord, eventually that we would also go to the nations and put our stake in that new land. Lord, thank you. Bring us to that place, we pray in Jesus' name. Now let's continue to worship God together. With your power, your presence, we will go to the ends of the earth. With your power, your presence, we will go to the ends of the earth with your power. Lord, thank you for giving us a very clear direction today in terms of how we could be involved in the nations. Would you now put your hand of blessing and favor on your people? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and grant you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you, everyone.